The focus of this case should be on one person and one person alone, Andrea Michelle Bowman. Family photos attached to the pre-sentence investigation report show a happy child with sparkling eyes in the first photo. More photos taken by her adopted mother show Andrea perfectly happy, hair curls with cute outfits as evidenced by the second. Unfortunately, though, those happy times of childhood for Andrea did not last, and her life became filled with abuse, as you can see in the third photo that is attached to the PSI. To understand this murder, you truly need to understand what was happening to Andrea at her home. At 14 years old, she had the courage to disclose that her adopted father, Dennis Bowman, had been sexually abusing her. When she disclosed this information to her family, her mother did not believe her. She was forced with the consequence of potentially being removed from her home and sent to foster care, something that she did not want to see happen, and she eventually recanted that abuse. To the best of our knowledge, that recantation came just a few short months before her murder. On March 11, 1989, Andrea, at just 14 years old, again had found the courage to pack what little she could carry and plan to run away. Before she could leave her home, the defendant came home and confronted her. She stood up to him, saying she was leaving, saying he was abusing her. And by his own admission, the last thing Dennis Bowman said to her was, no, you are not. And then he killed Andrea, silencing her permanently. The defendant gives numerous accounts of what happened in the next steps. He says at one point she had fallen down the stairs, she moaned while in a crumpled heap at the bottom, yet he never sought any emergency medical treatment or assistance for her. He then hid her body in the garage, brazenly calling the police, but not before he burned her coat and her bag. But he called the police to his home to report she was a runaway and that she had stolen money from him. He continued to give multiple versions of what he had said and did next. In one version, he tells his wife that he buried Andrea in her favorite sweater with flowers near a cemetery. He didn't want his wife to see him as the monster he truly was. He tells investigators he put Andrea in a barrel and put her out near the road, quote, with the rest of the trash. But when faced with extradition to Virginia for another matter, he finally confessed that Andrea was indeed buried in his own backyard. He further confessed that he tried to dismember her body with a machete, but that that didn't work. So he switched to an axe to put her into a barrel. Her remains were found in four separate bags inside of that barrel, and a bag of garbage was placed over the top of Andrea. Andrea was in that burial site for 30 years, unable to tell anyone what truly had happened to her. The defendant took her life and hid her body to save his own, so he could live a normal life with his wife and his biological daughter. For 33 years, the defendant has controlled this story. His version of the narrative has been filled with lies and manipulation. He made numerous statements to law enforcement, stating, you don't kill family, and he told the writer of the PSI, you don't hit women. Yet that's exactly what he did in this case to Andrea, which begs the question whether he truly ever saw her as family or not. Over the years, people would continue to search for her, and the police would continue to look for answers. Mr. Bowman said he wanted to scream and call them all idiots because he knew she was dead. He said a prison psychologist once told him the only way to keep a secret was to keep it to yourself, and that's what he selfishly did for more than 30 years. No amount of reformation of this defendant is available to make any change that would be significant. But society does indeed need protection from this man, a violent offender who left behind a trail of abuse. The sentence here must be proportionate to the horrific crime committed to both deter others and serve as punishment. In this case, Andrea lost not only her voice, but her life. She lost her potential and was given only a series of nevers. She would never go to prom or graduate high school. She would never go to college or find a career that she loved. She would never get married, never have children, 
She would never enjoy growing up and growing old, surrounded by family and friends who did indeed love her. The sentencing guidelines in 1989, or even now for that matter, cannot accurately calculate the seriousness of this offense or the extremely violent nature of what Mr. Bowman did. The people could argue for higher guidelines and that the defendant did indeed commit other crimes at the time he murdered Andrea, but unfortunately, because he hid her body for so long, the statute of limitations applies. As the pre-sentence investigation report indicates, this defendant does deserve to be incarcerated for the rest of his life. This case, the investigation solved by law enforcement, has finally given that voice to Andrea after nearly 33 years and given a chance to put the man who violently took her life away for the rest of his. Based upon the heinous facts, the dismemberment, the tampering and concealment of evidence, the lies and the manipulation, and the violent nature of this offense, Dennis Bowman deserves more punishment than the guidelines do allow. If there was ever a case to exceed those guidelines, this certainly is it. If the court is not inclined to exceed, the people request this court sentence the defendant, Dennis Bowman, to the maximum number of years for the murder of a bright and beautiful young girl who for a time trusted and loved him and who had her entire life ahead of her. 